All right guys, so let's talk today about our no spend month, okay? I wanna talk to you guys about how it went, what we did, what we learned, um, just some of the lessons that we took away from having a no spend January. So if you guys happen to be new here, first of all, welcome, thank you for being here. My name is Kayla, I'm a mom of two, I have a four year old, a two year old, and yes, I love to spend money, but I also love to save it, I love to budget, I'm the one that does like all the numbers in the house, I'm the one that tracks all the money, like I love to talk about money, I'm a money nerd, I could chat about this all day long. So I love sharing any tips that I have with you guys about that. Um, in general, I also share like a lot of mom content and all of that. So if you do happen to be new here, I would love for you to stick around, hit the red subscribe button, be my friend. We can talk about all things having to do with life. But in particular today, we're talking about how in the month of January, we challenge ourselves to do a no spend January. So when you do a no spend month, it can look very different depending on how strict you wanna go, right? The idea though, of course, is that you're trying to save money, you're trying to stop your usual spending habits work on those and kind of limit your spending in hopes of saving up some money. So we decided to do it for a whole month and we set specific like um, like restrictions for ourselves. So we didn't um, allow ourselves to buy things like we normally would like clothes and like for me it's like buying stuff for the kids, right? Like buying toys, buying pajamas, going to Target and buying them anything that I see, right? Anything that they screech for that they want. Not letting myself do that. Um, but we did also allow ourselves to do certain things. So obviously we were gonna buy groceries during January, we didn't starve ourselves. So we bought groceries. We also did allow ourselves to um, like order takeout, order Uber Eats, DoorDash, all of that because otherwise January would have been freaking miserable, okay? Because we love that kind of stuff. And then we did also say like, you know, if there was like an activity that we wanted to do as a family on the weekend, like we weren't gonna stop ourselves from doing that. But there are some people that do this as strict as like, hey, we're literally only gonna spend money on food, on groceries, and that's it. There's even some people that will literally say like, if we're gonna do a no spend month, we're not gonna even buy food. Like we're just gonna eat the stuff that we have in the house already. Like you can be as strict, as crazy as you want, or you can allow yourself to have some wiggle room. So that's the first thing to know in terms of a no spend month or a no spend week even. If you can't commit to a whole month, you can totally do this like for a week and still benefit from just trying to control your spending a little bit. So I would challenge you, if you, this is like something that you're like, no way I can never do it, just do it for a week or two weeks and see like what you can learn and if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you know, you get something out of it, then the next time say, you know what, I can do this, I can do this for a month. So I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that I mean, this was a great activity for us to do the whole no spend month. We saved a crap ton of money. Um, I have numbers here that I wanted to share with you guys. So I've shared before on my channel, like how we budget, I'll include some of those videos linked down below, but like how we budget our expenses as a family for, like all of that. And you guys know that we basically, we spend money, we put it on the credit card and then we pay off our credit card in full at the end of the month. So that we get the points, the rewards points, all of that. But I looked at my credit card bill at the end of January and that is the lowest my credit card bill has ever been like in times since I've like recorded it okay because our usual like our monthly spending is on that credit card and usually I will tell you our average about like when I open up the credit card at the end of the month sometimes I see like seven thousand dollars six thousand dollars these aren't like bills or like fixed expenses like our mortgage this is just extra spending things that we buy like it's pretty crazy. So $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, even as high as in the month of December, $11,245. Um, our credit card bill is usually pretty high, but then we pay it all off at the end of the month. When I opened up my credit card at the end of January, at the end of our no spend month, I was thrilled <laughs> to see that we only had $3,653 on that credit card. So compared to the month previously, that was like $11,000 or even just like an average of six, seven, eight, nine thousand $9,000, give or take, you know, depending on what's going on that month, that's still a big difference in terms of spending. That's still like four or $5,000 that we didn't spend. So it was definitely successful. You know, it was hard in the sense that like, I think I'll be honest, like the, the hard, one of the hardest things for me was that I am a mom of two and like one of the things that I like to do is I like to go to Target with the kids, right? And the entire month of January, I did not go to Target. I didn't step foot in Target. So for me, like Target is like an outing. Like the kids are driving me crazy, being at home, being cooped up, like let's just 
go shopping let's just go to target let's go to the dollar tree let's go to ulta like let's go somewhere right let's go to tj maxx let's go to marshall's like we didn't do that in the month of january and that's hard if you like to get out of the house if you like to go places because i mean yes you can go to places and not spend money you can do that but sometimes it doesn't happen right like let's just be real sometimes you end up seeing something and you're like oh i could use this or like the kids will see something and then you feel bad saying no or you're trying to avoid tantrum so you give it to them like we all know what it's like if you're a mom so that was hard i had to find places in the month of january to go to we visited the public library a ton in january because that to me is like the only place that we can go to and for sure we're not going to spend money because all of the books to check out are free like that is one of the best places to go to with kids um so we went there a lot and then we just went to the grocery store a lot to buy food because that's one of the things we were allowed to buy in january so um that was particularly hard um another thing for me that i struggled with was like there were a lot of like sales oh my god like there were so many sales that came up in january like after christmas remember you've got a bunch of clearance stuff clearance toys that was hard for me to resist because normally i'd be the first one at target trying to hit up any clearance items and getting stuff that i you know wouldn't pay normally full price for but it's on sale like it was hard to resist that like you know even something as stupid as like um like uh christmas candy right that like the next day after christmas you would see and like even into january right you would see like some of that stuff at walgreens or at cvs like discounted um i couldn't buy that kind of stuff so that was hard um i remember in january i'm pretty sure it was um jacqueline hill that i love all her makeup i love her collection like i'm a big supporter of like whenever she drops stuff and she had several launches where like she was all excited and like look i'm releasing this and normally i would have jumped on the bandwagon and bought her stuff but i couldn't because that wasn't one of the things that i was allowed to buy in january and it hurt because i was like man like i'm missing out on this i'm missing out on the sales but i mean i didn't die right like i'm perfectly fine here and to this day i still haven't even purchased those things that a month ago i was like man i really want to buy it i'm here it's you know i don't have it and i'm still fine so that was particularly difficult for me like if you guys did do the challenge or if you've ever done a no spend no buy month or whatever let me know down below in the comments like what was the hardest thing for you guys um that was just you know some of the stuff that mentally i was dealing with um, I do want to know though like some of the positives right obviously I already shared the positive of my credit card bill Yes, we saved some money, but throughout the no spend month. I feel like there was other stuff just like mentally That like I was working through and things that I came away from like feeling much better about so number one is I used to have a very a very bad toxic relationship with ordering crap on Amazon like like you guys know on my channel like i'm always order opening up a box there's always a million boxes stacked up in any part of my house downstairs and that that got overwhelming okay like the opening up boxes and then having to you know open them up to then put them in the recycling like that takes a lot of your time right to just freaking break down boxes every day so since we weren't doing as much of that during january like we had a lot of free time on our hands right like we didn't have to be breaking down boxes all the time which was just from like a mental perspective it was so nice like i felt like there was less clutter of the sense of like you know having all these amazon boxes in my house it was one less thing for me to do because even though like i was always excited when an amazon package would come in it was like a thing i had to do i had to take a moment out of my day to open them up to decide where i was gonna put this new thing that i got um so i didn't have as much of that to do in january and i feel like it was a very nice thing i also started to see like throughout this process like just how mentally like just taxing it is when you have so many things that you're constantly bringing into your home and i know that that's like the entire concept of like minimalism and i've always told you guys i'm not a minimalist i'm a maximalist <laughs> like i love to shop i love to buy stuff but i feel like i have to find a healthier balance right like i do like to buy new things but if i'm gonna buy new things they have to be things that i'm purposely purchasing there's a place where it's gonna go and it's not just gonna end up like on a surface somewhere with nowhere to go and i'm just buying it because it's cute or it's on sale or you know something like that so i'm working on finding a better balance of that and i definitely think a no buy month helped with that just realizing that like yes material things and new things can be nice but they can also like 
they can also kind of be like a burden in some ways um just mentally and even physically even like when it starts taking up your space and you have nowhere to put anything you have all this clutter you have all this mess the clutter then just like takes up space in your brain and it gives you anxiety like i'm sure you guys feel the same way so um i feel like that was definitely helpful um i just had a lot more peace like not having as many things come in in the month of january so one of the things that now i've been focusing on is like if i am going to buy something new if i am going to purchase something kind of having it be a one for one kind of deal. Like if I'm bringing something in new, I've got to get rid of something else, right? Like if I'm buying the kids new pajamas and I did that, like February 1st, I was at Target, I bought the kids some new pajamas and immediately, like once I brought them home, I went to the kids' rooms and I took out one of their old pajamas out of their drawer. I put that in the donation pile and I brought in the new pajama. So making it so that we're not just adding and adding and adding, like we're making space for the new stuff and giving the old stuff to somebody who could use it and donating it and giving it to a good cause and all of that because I don't just wanna have collections and collections of things and then have nowhere to put it. So that's one of the good positive takeaways too that I feel like I'm gonna to continue to work on throughout the year. I've also started to see like, just like knickknacky things. It's like annoying, okay? Like I used to be a huge sucker for like the Target dollar spot, right? Cause everything is three bucks, a dollar, five bucks. Um, seasonal decor like I used to be like if I'm not buying seasonal decor I'm missing out right like I need to have all of the New Year's stuff I need to have all of like the Easter stuff and Easter decor and I need to have like all like the knickknacky stuff right um, and now I'm kind of like do I want to have all that stuff like I kind of just I don't want to like have anything out on my surface right now you guys will watch my vlogs you'll see that my house has tons of crap on my surfaces right like you guys always comment on my videos i see them i see those comments like your house is giving me anxiety there's so much clutter everywhere i know but just because like i know it and i see it doesn't mean that i wish it was different right i'm just i'm busy i'm trying to figure out you know there's give and take and what i can attend to first but in theory right i wish that my house was clutter free in theory i wish that i had no crap on my surfaces um, so things where before I would be very enticed to buy, oh, this is so cute. Like, this is so cute, but do you need it? Like, do you need it? Or can you just like save that money for something that is a little bit more important? You know, that's something that's going to be a little bit more beneficial to your life. Like reevaluating some of those priorities has been really helpful. Okay. Sorry. My battery just died. So I had to like move you guys around. So the frame is probably off of where it was last time, but, um, just reevaluating some of those priorities has been good and not like that impulse shopping has been a lot less than it used to be um i used to literally like i'm telling you i would stay up late on my phone on amazon and i would just buy things and buy things and you know stuff from my saved cart like i have like 600 things in my saved for later cart and i would just pull things out of there and buy it because i was bored buy it because i don't know like i, I just i was bored and i just wanted to get it like I have a lot of problems that I'm trying to work through. But now I've done a lot less of that, like straight up. I've done a lot less of that. Um, I ask myself more than once, like, is this something that I really need? Um, like, am I going to be devastated if I don't have it? And then if I am going to buy stuff from Amazon, something that I have been doing more frequently is instead of buying like one different thing every single day, at the beginning of the week, I'll be like, okay, what do we need to buy from Amazon, right? Like, do I need to buy Tide Pods? Do I need to buy, like, anything that I would randomly buy from Amazon? Like, let me make one big purchase at one point in the week so that when I get it later on in the week, it's in, like, one consolidated box, right? Or, like, one big box or a couple of boxes, and we do all of the boxes situation the same day as opposed to every single day getting this huge box for like one tiny item and then you know the same thing every day that was literally happening like i would order like a small thing like a tube of mascara and it would come in a huge box and i'm like why would plus like the bubble wrap the packing stuff for one thing so trying to alleviate myself of some of that um i feel like that has been very beneficial to my sanity you know we did have valentine's day yesterday so i bought the kids like some stuff for their little valentine's day baskets but prior to valentine's day i was really saving up like instead of going and buying them stuff like february 1st um that i knew i wanted to maybe give them for valentine's day i kind of waited and like held off on that until valentine's day to put it in their valentine's day basket so sometimes that you know you can do that sometimes like it's too long to wait for another holiday but just try to be 
be more mindful of that like the kids have a million toys yes i'm still gonna buy them toys okay like don't hold me to not buying them toys ever again because i'm gonna fail miserably but just being a little more intentional about it you know there are still things that i want to buy like for the house i want to buy like some artwork for the house like there's some specific pieces that i want to buy for the house but i'm trying to like not like when i need something like going to the store or like going online for a purpose right like hey i need a new frame let me go look for a frame or i need a picture for this space in my house let me go find a picture for this space in my house as opposed to like let me just walk through tj maxx and see what's pretty and then i buy stuff that's pretty but i don't know where to put it or i have nowhere to put it I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys are still with me. I will tell you though, um, that something that was really hard for me in particular, and I've shared this before, um, if I wasn't on YouTube, if I wasn't on Instagram, if this wasn't my business, I feel like I absolutely would spend less. Like I would not be buying clothes as frequently. I would not be buying stuff for myself as frequently. I wouldn't be buying as often because part of my job wouldn't consist on like showing you guys stuff that I bought and making affiliate commission off of it. Um, so anytime that I share like a link in my description box and you guys click on it, um, oftentimes that's an affiliate link and I get like a small commission from it. Same with like Instagram. I'm sure you guys know the drill by now. Like when people do like swipe up links, like here, tap to shop, swipe up, whatever. If you use their links, they are getting a small commission from that chart. It costs you nothing extra, but they're making a little percentage of that. And that's one of the ways that we make money. That's one of the ways that I make money. So in January, since I wasn't like buying new clothes or buying new things, I will tell you um, my affiliate income went down dramatically. Okay. So meaning like my business took a hit from me not shopping. So to somebody that's not on Instagram or that's not part of your business model, then you don't have to worry about that. But for me, that was one of the things that was hard about no spend January was that there was like a financial implication for my business. Like, yes, I was saving money, you know, in terms of like not spending, but at the same time, I wasn't bringing in as much as I normally do from affiliate revenue. So that's been something that I've been like thinking about and like trying to figure out like, how can I um, like be smarter about that? Like if I buy a new shirt, for example, let's say I go to Target and I buy a new shirt, you know, usually I'll try it on in front of the mirror. I'll show you guys, you know, that I got a new shirt. I'll link it for you guys. Maybe one of the things that I have to do is, um, you know, if I do make a purchase, try to share it several times, like throughout the next month so that there's more opportunities for me to make money off of that one item as opposed to like continuing to buy something new and new and new, like things like that, like business strategy wise that I have to figure out what's going to make sense. But that's something that I'm just going to have to like work through. Um, I still feel like it's gotten to a point where buying too much stuff all the time it's just overwhelming. Like the taking off of the tags of the clothes, like I don't know what it is about freaking kids clothes, like that there's like a million tags all over the place. And like, I used to find the tags all over my house, all over my floor, all over the rugs. And it's just because I was, I was buying a lot of stuff. So those are like some of my reflections. Um, there were still things during our no spend January where, um, you know, things came up. We had doctor's appointments that we obviously had to, you know, pay for. Um, I feel like Joe did a really good job. I was kind of worried about him, I'll be honest, because my husband, if you guys are new, he's the one that like loves to spend, um, like he loves to blow his budget. Like normally what we do in our house is like every month he gets a certain amount of spending money and I get a certain amount of spending money and that's ours free to do whatever we want with, right? Like if he wants to buy like the stupidest things in the world <laughs> like he can go ahead and buy it he doesn't have to run it by me um he can blow it on whatever he wants and then same for me like if i want to buy stuff for my hair if i want to buy clothes if i want to buy books like anything i want to buy i use that money for my stuff and you guys can hear the kids screaming in the background and they're with joe but they're like I don't know, something's happening there. But anyway, he has very expensive taste. Usually if I give him spending money, like February 1st, usually like by February 1st uh, in the evening, it's gone. Like he's already bought some high ticket item. Um, and so we tease him about that all the time. So when I told him that we were gonna do a no spend January, I was like, this guy's gonna have a fit. Like he's not gonna wanna do it or he's gonna cave in at you know, January 15th, something's gonna happen and he's gonna wanna spend money. And he did great, you guys. He did such a good job 
Um, he likes to remind me that I was the one at Target February 1st, like the minute that I could go back to the stores, I was the one there. He held off till like February, I don't know, like like last week he ended up spending all his money. I think it was a good like experiment for both of us and we both said that we will, um, like hopefully we will do another no spend month at some point in the year. I just have to figure out like what's gonna be you know, a good month. Like obviously we're not gonna do a no spend December because that's when we're buying a lot of stuff. But maybe at some point like in the summer we'll do like a no spend month and see if we can also like save up some of that money. So overall it was a very good learning experience. So I feel like I took a lot away from that and I feel like it's good for everybody to do that at some point. Even if it's like for a week I said, like figure out what it is that you, you know, are really like having a hard time going without right like if you do a no spend month or a no spend week what is it that's really um like getting you is it the starbucks is it the man like i can't go to target and buy new pillows like what is it that's really your thing that you're spending a lot of money on and then analyze that like do i really need to be spending money on that or is there a cheaper alternative or can i get that same like you know that same hit of like buying stuff you know with something else right because at a certain point like when you're buying a lot of stuff like it can become an addiction like every time that i would go outside and see a package um like i would get like a, a like a hit from it like you know it's like a drug you know something went into my brain going oh my god you're happy now because there's an amazon package like that's that's not okay right like that's not good um that's not a good spending habit um and that's something that you have to like work through so i'm working on it but i feel like this um no spend month really helped with that so if you heard me chat about all of this and you're still here even though i know that this video was super like word vomity and rambly because i never like to script my videos you guys like i don't even like come to my videos with an outline like i just kind of talk to you guys um, about different things and hope that I remember what I wanted to say but if you haven't done one I challenge you to do one okay like you're watching this it's February maybe start in March maybe start next week like do it for a week do it for a month and figure out like what you want those rules to be for your no spend is it going to be that you're not allowed to um order out are you not allowed to go to a restaurant you know what are the things that you will be allowed to spend money on is it just groceries remember that you're the one that gets to decide that obviously the more things that you restrict that you say no i can't spend money on that then the more potential you have to save but you can start little right baby steps like that's always better than nothing and then kind of go from there so that is it um i hope that you guys will let me know how it went for you um in the comments let me know what you liked if you failed miserably i know i asked you guys on instagram how it went and some people told me like it was awesome i learned so much like impulse control like the impulse shopping like decreased significantly and then others of you guys were like um i failed miserably i was shopping the whole month so i know that that's that's gonna happen and um you know you can always try again right but i would love to know how you guys did and that is it those are my reflections on my no spend month so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if there's anything else that you want me to talk about chat about content ideas things you'd like to see here on my channel about money not about money whatever you want to see let me know down below in the comments and that is it i love your freaking faces thanks for being here make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys